What's up, y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This is your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on today's video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, share the video, turn on your notification bell, put your seatbelt on when you hop in my car. That's all I'm asking you to do, man. And if you want me on the panel, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get it popping and get into today's video. And today, we got to talk about Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury a little bit, man. I... I haven't covered this topic in a long time. I've been trying to let it get closer to the fight date. I've been waiting on new content and new material to come out. And um, so I want to talk about it because um, Deontay Wilder recently did an exclusive interview with 78 Sports TV right here on YouTube. Shout out to him and salute to him for getting such, you know, an exclusive interview um, and, and, and bringing great content to the boxing fans. So salute to him for that. Um, and I want to react to that. I've been hearing some stuff that Tyson Fury is saying. I just want to give y'all my thoughts on the latest updates and stuff that's going on with this whole Deontay Wilder, um, Tyson Fury fiasco. Um, but before I get into that, bro, our live show is every Wednesday night. So tomorrow night, 7.30 Central Time, 5.30 on the West Coast, 8.30 on the East Coast. Y'all come hang out with your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, for another episode of You Got Knocked the F Out. Right here tomorrow night, 7.30 Central Time. And we even adding to that because now we got another show that we're doing. That one's a co-host show. It's a collaboration with the homie in the OG KQKC Boxing Network. We're going to alternate from his platform to my platform. We're going to be doing that show every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. It's going to be the morning after boxing show, boxing show, bro. The morning after boxing show. We're doing it Sunday morning so we can recap the fights that happened the night before and talk about the hottest topics in boxing. So that's going to be a fun show and a fun collaboration with the singing OG. So y'all got to stay tuned to the community page, bro. And you got to stay in tune with your notifications so you can know when I'm going to be live and where I'm going to be live at between me and KQKC. But every Wednesday, we're still going to have this show right here, man. So, um, you know, y'all stay tuned for all the stuff that's going on with the channel, man. We're growing. I appreciate y'all. Be sure to hit that thumbs up. But let's get into this, man. So Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. Um, Tyson Fury ha has been, he dealt with some things with his daughter. You know, I'm glad she's out the hospital, glad she's doing well. But his father has said that Tyson Fury isn't focused. Um, he said some stuff about the game plan from the second fight won't work in this fight. Um, which, okay. I mean, you beat, you beat Deontay Wilder so convincingly and it was all a fair fight. Um, by, by by John Fury's words and, and Tyson Fury's words and, and people that are fans of him or Deontay Wilder haters, whatever you want to call it. He beat him so easily. Why would you change the game plan? Why would you change the game plan? I maintain he should have the same exact gloves made for him. Not the same gloves because you got to, you know, you got to wear new gloves to the fight or whatever, but he should get the same gloves with the same trunks. You know what I'm saying? Whoever made his gloves, whoever made his trunks, he should get them because what he did in the second fight Worked so well for him, and he didn't cheat, right? He didn't cheat at all, you know. So why would you change your game plan? Because Deontay Wilder, you know, he, he's a bum, right? He's easy to beat. So, I, you know, they're, they're saying things like that and just the whole COVID excuse, ducking out and saying you have COVID but you had a car dealership, saying that you had COVID but you had the, you had the casino taking pictures and shit. Like, all of that stuff, bro, like, I, I'm not confident Based on their, how they're acting and how they're behaving, the fact that he's over in 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 um in in the UK right now and not with his trainer, like we we less than a month away from the fight, bro, and you ain't training with your trainer. Your head trainer ain't training you. You less than a month out from the fight, a little over four weeks away from the fight, and you and you ain't with your trainer yet, like bro. All signs are pointing to they have no intention of of, of keeping of of making this fight, like. They probably gonna either ask for another extension or pull out all together, um, and it's just it, it's horrible, bro. And the fact that some people root for this dude, I or they dislike Deontay Wilder so much that they want that they make excuses for this type of behavior. It's just it's laughable to me. It's laughable, laughable to me. My 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 feelings on the subject hasn't changed. Um, if they get in the ring, I'm, which I hope that they do. Then I'll I'll be I'll be happy with it, but I'm 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 kind of I don't want to say I'm turned off from the fight, but 
All of these signs are pointing to Tyson Fury doing the same shit. And you just got to look at his track record. You look at what he did to Klitschko. You look at him not fighting Deontay Wilder the second time when he was supposed to. He went and fought two fights in between. You look at the man doing everything he can, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to um, to get out of this, this this third fight. Spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees to get out of this third fight. And to do all of that... Only to finally fight him, like, I don't know, bro. I got to see it to believe it. Then he ducked out of the, the July 24th shit talking about some COVID, bro. We still don't know who in this camp had COVID. It went from a, it being an outbreak in the camp to, oh, Tyson Fury was the only one that got it, to, oh, Tyson Fury's at the car dealership. Oh, he wasn't at the car dealership. He was at the casino. Oh, those are old pictures. Like, just a bunch of shit that don't make no sense, bro, from him. And a bunch of lies and... And, and, and just dishonest behavior. Like, it is what it is with that dude, bro. He a liar. He a cheater. And you can't trust nothing that he's saying until you actually see him do it. You know what I'm saying? So I can't trust. You know, he's also said, oh, I'm going to knock Deontay Wilder out. I'm going to do this. You know, his usual shit. Which, again, I got no problem with. Talk your shit. If that's what you believe you're going to do, then cool. But all the contradicting stories, all the all the, the back and forth. Oh, I'm fighting. I'm not fighting. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Deontay Wilder is dangerous, but then Deontay Wilder is a bum. Like, all the shit that's coming from that side of it, bro. And the fact that you ain't even over here yet and your fight is less than a month away. Like, I, I believe it on October 9th when he comes to the ring, bro. I believe it on October 9th when he comes to the ring. Now, for Deontay Wilder's side. For Deontay Wilder's side. A couple of things. His trainer, Malik Scott, said he's, he's thinking about coming into this fight 235, 240. Typically, I'd be worried about that. I'd be worried about that. I don't like fighters putting on a bunch of weight like that, leading up to, to a big fight when they haven't carried that weight really ever in any big fights before. You know, Deontay Wilder, somebody that'll, that'll range from 207, you know, highest I've seen him, like 220, 225. But at the same time, he's had 17, 18 months to get ready for this fight, right? So it ain't like he's just packing on the, he had a fight four or five months ago, and he was like 220, 215, and then here he is, boom, Five, six months later, fighting the next fight at 235. So, hopefully, you know, he has a nutritionist. I've seen that he got a nutritionist or whatever. He's been training hard. So, if he does come in at 235 or 240, whatever Malik Scott is saying that he, he he's going to come in at, hopefully for the sake of Deontay Wilder and Deontay Wilder fans, it's, it's a weight that he's acclimated to. It's a weight that's not going to cause any stamina issues with him. Um, he's able to be as fast. He looks fast on the pads, on the pads that I've seen and the training videos that I've seen. He looks still fast, still explosive, but those are training videos. It's different in a fight. You know what I mean? So you can take those with a grain of salt. I can see that he's trying to work on improvements, trying to make adjustments. Look like he's planning to use his left hand, um, particularly a left hook down to the body more. Looks like he's planning a jab more in this fight. Um, use more of a complete offensive attack. Looks like his head movement is a little bit better, but everything can look good until you get in the ring the day of the fight. So... I want to see what it looks like on fight night, assuming that we get there. But the whole 235, 240 thing, yes, it's not something that I say is a red flag. With him coming in that heavy and looking that muscular for the fight, it's something that I say I'm going to keep my eye on. I would not call I would call it a red flag if it was something where, damn, bro, you did that shit in four or five months. Like, nah, bro, he ain't fought since February 2020. And he's been training. He's said himself he's had multiple training camps. So it's something that could work to his benefit if he put the weight on right. If he if he got himself acclimated to the weight and it's something that, you know, it's not just a whole quick bulk up session like it was something that he got to gradually, it could be okay. That was one little nugget I took out of the whole um, interview that he had. The other thing um, that I wanted to talk about is he's, he's now – to the realization, oh, let me talk about the COVID thing, because he believes, like I believe, and a lot of people believe, that Fury was lying. And he touched on it, bro, and, and I want to reiterate it here, and it's something I've said, like, COVID is nothing to play with. So when you use it to get out of a fight, or when you claim you have COVID, but then we see you not wearing a mask, or you claim you had COVID, and we see you, you know, hopping on, like, you have COVID, you're supposed to quarantine, but you're able to fly to the UK, like, just a bunch of shit that Tyson Fury did and said don't make sense. And people have died from it. Deontay Wilder said he knows people that have had it. I myself know people that have had COVID and had to get hospitalized. Thankfully, no one I know has passed away from it. But um, I have seen it really, really scare families and really um, really do damage, bro. So like him, I believe I believe wholeheartedly it's nothing to play with. And I believe Fury was lying about that shit. I believe liars lie. <laughs> I believe liars lie. And I think he was looking for a way to get out the fight, bro. 
So so that's something that 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 Deontay Wilder and I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, something else, bro. Something else that 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 was said. Um, oh, he's now open to the idea, and he believes, and he's getting his mind right, which I'm glad. You know, this is it. You know what I'm saying? He don't want no more extensions. If Fury don't make this October 9th, he's going to be looking for them to strip Fury. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be looking to fight for the vacant belt, which I think is probably what's going to happen. That's what I think is going to happen. I think Dillian White is somewhere training in the wings, waiting in the wings um, to get the call as a backup opponent. Him and Deontay Wilder, where the card goes on. I think at this point, the card has to go on. The card has to go on. You got Edgar Berlanga that's headlining the, the undercard, so to speak. That want to be on ESPN Plus. Edgar Berlanga will be back in action that same night. Then you got a ton of top talent that you've already pushed their career back two or three months. So at this point, if you if you Bob Arum, if you Al Heyman, um, they coming out with these PBC episodes of, 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 of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. At this point, they need to have a backup plan, bro. They have to have a backup plan for... For Tyson Fury pulling out of this fight, bro. They have to. You'd be stupid not to. Because you can't continue. Like, Jared Anderson is supposed to be on this card. Helene is on this card um, against Kawanaki. Um, you got F.A. Ajagba versus um, Frank Sanchez on this card. Um, Deontay Wilder, obviously, himself is on this card. You can't continue to hold up Edgar Berlanga's career and all the other fighters that I just mentioned because Tyson Fury comes and asks for another extension or because Tyson Fury tries to pull out of a fight again. I have no doubt and I have no worry as to whether or not Deontay Wilder wants this fight. I have a huge concern about Tyson Fury being able to make this October 9th date. He hasn't looked in shape. Seems like he hasn't been focused. Seems like he hasn't had any interest in the fight. Um, all his whole camp and fans and everything, they've been making a bunch of excuses beforehand. You know, he's talking about retirement. He's talking about MMA. He's talking about an Anthony Joshua fight when he got this fight right in front of him. Just a lot of shaky shit to where if you... Al Heyman and the PBC, if you Bob Arum and Top Rank, who is Tyson Fury's promoter, your ears got to perk up a little bit and you got to listen to the to the writing on the wall and, it, and you really need to have a backup plan. You really need to have a backup plan. And so the fact that Deontay Wilder said he's open to that, he said they still would have to pay him anyway, um, would Tyson Fury and his camp. So I understand it's, it's, it's financially um, bad for Tyson Fury if he don't make this fight, but I think... I think he don't care, bro. I, th I, don't, I think he doesn't want any parts of Deontay Wilder, man. I think he don't want to fight him. I think he don't want to fight him. Now, some would say it's because he beat him so easy the first time, and he, he really wanted that Anthony Joshua fight, so he's so bummed that he has to fight Deontay Wilder, and so that's why he's doing You know, people will make excuses for Tyson Fury because that's what people tend to do for him. That's what people tend to do for him, but I'm not going to make any excuses for him, just like I don't make any excuses for you know, Javante Davis's opponents, or I don't make any excuses for for um for, for Tiafima Lopez or Devin Haney or Canelo Alvarez or Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford or Sean Porter. When a fighter needs to be criticized, you better be damn sure that right here on Knockout Boxing we're gonna criticize him. And Tyson Fury, I believe, is just he he understands what he did in that second fight. Like, bro, he cheated, fam. He cheated in the second fight. It's clear as day to me. Maybe not to some people watching this video. And he doesn't believe he can beat Deontay Wilder this third time because it's such an easy bag, bro. Like, you got to understand common sense. He beat him so easy the second fight. Okay, you won an Anthony Joshua. That fight's still around the corner for you if you beat Deontay Wilder again, whom you beat so easy in the second fight. So, and you're going to get tens of millions of dollars to do it. So why not get this shit out the way if you're so supremely confident as you try to put on and then go on to your Anthony Joshua fight, bro. I believe it's because he know what's coming for him, bro. And he know what, like, when you, when you can tell when someone's not confident. You can tell when someone knows that they, they did some shit to, to, to kind of move, move shit in their favor, bro. And that's what Tyson Fury did. It's all over his face. It's all over his actions. So I don't believe he's going to show up October 9th. I hope. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but... I'm just glad to hear Deontay Wilder says he's willing to fight for the vacant title, and that's what Fury would have to do. If he don't fight Deontay Wilder, he got to vacate, retire, and then Deontay Wilder and Dillian White or whomever can fight for that WBC championship. At the end of the day, on October 9th, I'm to the point, y'all, where I just want the heavyweight division to move on. Whether that's Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, 
or Deontay Wilder versus Dillian White for a vacant belt and the winner fight the winner of Usyk and AJ, whatever it is to, to get the heavyweight division to move on, I'm tired of the saga. I'm tired of the drama. I'm tired of the lies and the cheating and all that shit. It's time to put this shit behind boxing because at this point, like, it's hard to even get excited for this fight. And it's, it's supposed to be a huge fight, right? It's supposed to be a huge fight. It's supposed to be a big event, but it's hard to get excited for a fight that you know one of the parties in the fight is doing everything they can not to make it to the fight. Just my thoughts. Y'all let me know y'all's comment down below. Hit the like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, turn on your notifications, and don't forget to hit me up if you want to have me hop on the panel. Knockoutbox86 at yahoo.com is the email address. Our live show is tomorrow night. Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You got Knocked the F out, episode number 10. It's going to be a fun night of boxing talk. And then I also got a new show that I'll be doing, collaborating and co-hosting with the singing OG, KQKC Boxing Network. We're going to go over on his channel, then we'll be over on my channel. So y'all have to stay tuned on the community page. You got to subscribe to his channel, subscribe to my channel, so you'll get those notifications so you know when we're going live and doing our show every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, man, the morning after boxing show gonna be lit bro it's gonna be lit but i appreciate y'all watching the video enjoy the rest of your day and with that we out of here peace y'all